great. So next up, uh, we have Amir speaking about microcode updates on Chromebooks. Enjoy. Hello and good afternoon. Uh, I'm here to talk about the infield microcode update on Chromebooks. So um, is the list of people who have worked on it. Okay. So starting with, uh, we'll be looking in general as to what the microcode update is. We'll explore uh, what does it mean to enter a general format about the microcode update. Um, post that, we'll have a look at the problem statement that we're trying to solve here. Uh, then a proposed solution uh, corresponding to the problem and a general implementation scheme and the flow updates. So starting uh, P6 family, uh, mid 90s and the processes further, Intel have capability to correct the bugs or errata by loading an Intel supplied uh, binary and that gets loaded on the CPU. So this data block is called as the microcode update. So it has capability to patch the microcode firmware on the CPU, plus it has the capability to patch these other CPU firmware as well. So on the screen, you'll see uh, the general uh, layout for the microcode update. It has a 48 byte of generic header that goes in which has the information about the microcode version, the date the microcode version of the binary was built, and it has the information about the CPU it has been targeted for. for followed by that 48 uh, byte of general header, you have the actual microcode update data. And the data size is also part of the header. And in some of the release, you have the extended uh, header along with the generic header. If you want to target the microcode update specific to some of the CPU SKUs, then you need a further resolution into figuring out what CPU uh, it's been targeted to. So that's when the extended uh, header comes into picture and you load, uh, it allows you to load the microcode only for very uh, specific SKUs of the processor that are in field. So in general, uh, microcode update helps to ensure the stability and security of the platform once it's shipped out. So looking at the problem statement, today Chromebooks do not have a provision to update the microcode from RW region through the FIT-based mechanism. So the FIT-based mechanism is actually a pre-reset thing where CPU goes and look out, looks up for the FIT uh, table where it gets the address to the microcode uh, data and starts loading the microcode uh, firmware onto the, micro, uh, the microcode update onto the microcode firmware and patches the other CPU firmware as well. So um, this is how your fit entries actually look like. So your fit table actually cont contains can contain multiple of these fit entries where you have the address of the firmware you want to load, and you give the size of the update and that uh, of the binary that needs to be loaded. And you have a generic type. So type zero is for microcode. You have provisions to uh, get insert the other binaries as ACM, TXT. So that is being dictated by the type field here. So arriving at the problem statement here, your fit actually points to, uh, fit is actually po uh, part of your boot block. So boot block is your RO section and fit, fit actually resides into it. And it points to the CPU, uh, the microcode binary, which is part of the RO itself. So neither your fit is uh, capable of getting updated, nor you can update the CPU microcode block because both of them resides into the RO section. So I don't have a provision where I can update the microcode somehow because there's no read write section here. So this restricts uh, my fit base capab capability to load the microcode only from the RO region, which is non updatable. So some the problem lies here where actually there is a capability for microcode to load after the reset also. 
but then there are restrictions on some of the firmwares that needs to be patched before the reset. So it's important that those IP firmwares get gets patched before the reset is called. So it's, a, it's essential that the microcode update that goes through gets loaded before the reset. So we came up with a solution to rather pack two boot blocks now in the core boot image. So with the current implementation, what you have is your RO section contains single boot block. What we propose is to pack two boot blocks here, where each boot block are identical. The only difference between the two boot block is the fit table inside it. So the fit table in the first boot block, which I call as boot block underscore RO fit, actually has a fit table that points to your microcode binary inside the RO region. So this is same as the original implementation where nothing has changed, right? The addition to this is the second boot block that has been put in there. Now this boot block would have a fit table which would contain the address of the microcode which would point to a microcode binary actually pointing to your RW staging area. Now this RW staging area is capable of getting updated. So this is my RW region and I'm capable of pushing an update here and I would make the uh, fit RW to point to my RW staging area. So I have now provision to actually pick up the microcode either from the original boot block which resides in the RO region and now I have provision to pick up the microcode from the RW region as well. So this actually needed uh, creating one of the, uh, we deserve one of the flash map area for RW staging area to get the read write um, to actually update the microcode there inside the binary gets updated there. And we use the Intel top swap mechanism to actually switch between the two boot blocks. So if you want to boot from the microcode that is part of your RO region, you pick up the top uh, boot block which is on the top. And if you want to boot with a boot block that points to your uh, microcode in the RW staging area, you pick the other boot block which is down there. So you use the Intel top swap mechanism to actually switch between the two boot blocks. So in general, the implementation relies on um, picking the microcode update from the RW staging area. So this would essentially need your the fit that is allocated in the second boot block to point to your RW staging area. And you somehow need a knob to switch between the two boot blocks, right? So that knob is provided by your RTC backup control register, which uh, like we mentioned, there's a feature called top swap, right? Where you can, it allows you to pick either of the two boot blocks. So we'll look into general how the top swap works. So top swap is an Intel feature which is capable of inverting address lines ranging from A16 to A20. For the current implementation, what we have done is uh, we have set the top swap enable in the descriptor, plus we have set the top swap. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So if you see on the screen, um, it has capability to actually invert A16 to A20 lines. So for 16, 64 KB, if I set the top swap to enable and set the top swap size to 64 KB, and you set your boot block size to 64 KB, you can actually invert the access to the boot blocks. So either at single time, when I enable the top swap, so when I enable the top swap, this boot block gets picked up. When I disable the top swap, the boot block which is above get picked up, picked, picked up. So essentially both the boot block are now pointing to different fits. And when I boot from the boot block which is on the first one, I'm able to point to the uh, microcode binary in the RO region. If I pick the boot block which is below, I'm able to boot uh, pass the microcode from the RW region. So this allows me to get actually update the microcode region and uh, use the uh, microcode update from there. 
So this backup control register is part of your RTC register block. And um, you can just write one zero to it to, as a switch to enable the top swap and disable the top swap. So we'll look at the general flow as to um, how the top swap uh, or the microcode update would work with the architecture that is being planned. So let's suppose uh, you are into a kernel and you bought, booted with your active firmware block uh, RWA and, uh, and you have rolled out an update which is having the microcode update. And since you, your active firmware block is RWA, the firmware gets loaded into RWB. Now this, the firmware patch that is, the update that has come, comes with an updated microcode binary as well. So the microcode version in RWA, which is your current booting slot, was version V2. And the microcode version in the staging area, which the other boot block points to, is also V1. And the microcode version that has come as a part of update is version v2. And your top swap is set to one because your normal boot would always have your top swap set to one. So you will essentially boot with the boot block pointing, uh, having fit, pointing it to your RW region. So when you, uh, when you reboot the system, the v, uh, when you reboot the system, your boot block that gets picked up your fit that um, is currently pointing to your microcode staging area, which holds the version V1. So if you look here, the staging area still has the version V1 and your fit points to it. So as soon as you trigger a reboot, your version V1 gets loaded. You come to boot block. Reboot sees that the RWB has been updated and the firmware next is set to firmware B. So it starts picking up the uh, firmware B. Now, boots further picking up the firmware B which, and comes to RAM stage. So the RAM stage has a driver which looks, which sees a different in the uh, microcode version between the slot and the one, the, one micro, the microcode which is stored in the staging area. So as, like, as we mentioned, the microcode in the update would be version V2 and the one you're running into is V1. So there's a difference in the version there. So what it does is it updates the staging area with version V2. And your fit now points to, was pointing to staging area, right? So now your fit actually points to your version V2 here. So you disable the top strap while, while doing it just for a precautionary way. If the update is be, uh, broken, you still have a way to point your microcode to your RU region. And then you issue a reset here. So once you issue a re, re, uh, reset here, your alternative fit now would point to your version V2, which just got updated in the staging area. So just before the reset, you actually now, uh, started picking up the version V2. So earlier, you actually booted with version V1. Now you have a version V2 running on the CPU. Now you come to the same check where you see uh, the slot RW is updated to V2, the staging area is V2, and the current running version is V2. So you, you just do a fly, uh, flash write predict for this uh, staging area, and you boot further. So this is the uh, update flow uh, that is uh, that would, you would see with the plan implementation. Now coming to the recovery part, where um, due to some reason there is failure, right? So you your microcode that gets loaded after the update is version v1. You come to vboot. So the cases for recovery would be your uh, staging area after the update gets updated with version v2. Your microcode version in the RO cannot get updated. So still, it holds the reference to version v1. And and the recovery case, uh, like when you the default boot scenario is with top swap enable. So you, so issue a reset either by manual re recovery or a developer based recovery, right? You issue a, re a reboot, the microcode version that gets loaded after the update was V2, you come to the uh, boot block. So if recovery is set and top swap bit is set to enable, what the logic would do, it would set the top swap to zero. 
So essentially, it will make the uh, fit to point to your RO region. So it'll pick up the alternate boot block that we have uh, put, uh, that was part of the original implementation. So now, after this, you issue a reboot. You issue a reboot now. Your boot block gets that gets picked up is the upper one, which has the fit, which points to your RO boot, uh, RO microcode update. So on the reset, the RO microcode update gets picked up, and you boot further through the recovery. So this is in general the recovery case. So this is the first boot case where uh, your actually staging area is empty. Your microcode binary in your um, R R O R W A R W B is all same, so all are set to version V one because this is basically when you build an image and flash it or a factory flash where you flash the image. So all the R R O R W A R W B would have the same uh, uh, microcode binaries, and the initial top sub state is the bug control default, which is set to zero. So start. Uh, Start booting, and then um, the same RAM stage driver sees that the staging area is empty. It copies the microcode binary v1 into the staging area, issues a reboot by setting the top swap to enable. So this would be your normal case where top swap would always be enabled for the normal case, and for recovery case, you'll have top swap always disabled. So it starts picking the version v1 from the staging area, boots further, gets into RAM stage. Uh, applies the flash protection to the uh, microcode staging area and boots further. So uh, this is pretty much the implementation flow with the uh, microcode updates. Yeah, any questions? Um, so my first question is just for understanding. Um, does this microcode update? It doesn't persist on the CPU, right? So it has to be reloaded on every boot, or how yes. does it work? Okay. Yeah. So does that mean once you have an update, every boot, every normal boot after that, that's not recovery, will load the updated yes. boot block in the W? Yeah. So uh, the scope is only lasting till the reboot. So for every reboot, you'll have to apply the microcode again. Okay, and then. When you want to boot in recovery, then you first boot into the updated boot block, and that one will reset the top swap yes. to zero? Yes. But what if it's broken and doesn't do that? So then there's an option for uh, normal, uh, like forced recovery, where uh, you see that um, the system gets hanged or it gets bricked, right? So you have a battery cutoff option through the uh, buttons, right? Mm -hmm. So if you press that, you have battery cut off and your RTC back register, right? It goes to zero by default. So that's like absolute recovery. Okay, but the user has to manually do that, yes. right? There's no automatic way to recover from that? No. Okay. So this is like case where the system is bricked and you can't like do anything. Sure, I mean, so on a normal Chromebook, it's not possible to put it in a state where it won't automatically recover, right? Because it always reads from so read the read-only in that case. So the binary that gets updated, right, has already been validated at the Intel end and the Google end. So mm. whatever has been pushed as a part of the update is the same binary. And sure. the same, okay. same gets updated in the staging area too. But Oh, so is the area flash protected where that uh, boot block is in? Yes, like, and okay. the uh, re the one you mentioned would all in the recovery scenario, right? Your CPU binary is also already like the microcode binary is already part of your RO, so that can never be tampered. So you'll also ha always have a scene copy of microcode there. Right, but you need to manually trigger it to boot that. Yeah. It, okay. And one more thing. Um, so. Uh, isn't this a way that the RW firmware can use to circumvent the RW firmware rollback protection? If it uh, so, it, it it can essentially attack the read-only TPM firmware space with that, right? Because it can reboot into a boot block that is controlled by the RW firmware, and then it can use the control over the TPM to drop or modify the TPM spaces that it wasn't supposed to have access to. Uh, so basically, this would apply way before the reset is done, right? So 
Well, I mean, so the fundamental problem here is you're running your boot block out of read writable space, no, right? No, our, our, so okay. Our, but then, how do you yeah. update it? Sure. It, it's just <laughs> so if you look at the files, right? Uh, it's been so those blocks, right? Uh, the one in the top is all our. Right, but I mean, that was the one. problem sheet. Yeah, yeah, so there's uh, a few pieces to this to note. Um, one is that last bullet point where it says some IP firmware can be patched only during reset. Um, uh, that actually should be also discussed about um, what type of resets. Uh, there's different, you know, there's warm and cold, and some of that only gets applied during warm versus cold. Um, and to your point about the attack vector, it is in this particular case the two boot blocks are sitting in RO, but one of them has a fit entry to a region that's in RW, which is only containing the microcode update. And so all the code is in RO still. Yeah. The, yes, the code is still in RO. And then um, go to the next slide. So one you... of these guys. Yeah, so that's the RO versus RW layout, um, where the green is RO. And then the blue and the black down below is RW. Okay, thanks. So that's awesome. Yeah, and so there is, I mean, to your point, like you're essentially, on, there's a, will you, I mean, to go to the next one, I think we had a sequence in time. Okay. Yeah, so like it's these guys between the resets where that's like your duration of a mismatch of RO and an RW in the hopes that it works more than anything. Um, but that is your attack vector. If you can load a microcode, which is signed and encrypted by Intel, but and then you could take over the actual execution of the CPU to make it do something different. But um, that's that's the risk, is essentially what, what that opens up. OK, thanks. Can you load old microcode, or is it going by version number? No, you can load uh, the old microcode too. So then you can basically uh, attack this by. Yeah, yeah, so the other bit was uh, go to, you had FPR somewhere, which yeah. wasn't mentioned in here, but it is in there. Yeah, it's there in the last one. So last one? Have... Yeah, so that is, does it stand for flash protection for region? Protection. So basically, in the spy controller, you could, so I mean, it, Ignoring a physical attack, but then the flash protection register will protect access to that specific region. I understand, but if somebody puts there, if you update microcode and you manage to update it to an old version, which is uh, uh, flawed for whatever reason, this one, this the old version will be executed from RW if that uh, address redirection is enabled. I mean, that's what Aaron mentioned. You are actually doing a flash predict on that. So while booting to the to the kernel, you would not have actually a right access to that. So but at some point, you had right access to that to update the microcode, right? So what when you're updating the microcode, you put there not the newer, but older version. Yeah, so that could totally attack, happen for sure. But that, um, uh, it's also within the purview of our, our boot flow of already choosing things to verify boot, right? That's all packaged together and we're just taking it from one area and putting it into another. This is part of the chain of trust. It is not every link in the chain of trust. So something else would be preferred to verify that you're actually about to load the right microcode. That's um, like in UEFI with something like capsule update, for so instance. So one thing There's we a... planned was to have a smoke test before loading it. So it's like the staging area, right? you actually started load right? you do a test where you actually load the microcode from the staging area mm -hmm. if the micro version turns out to be invalid you actually drop that and just reboot setting the top swap to zero right right that's why what i'm saying is that this is the process and to prevent things like going back to, rolling back to an older microcode there has to be some other thing in the process of like delivering to the system yeah, so everybody. yeah Thanks for the presentation. I have a question. Uh, can this method be applied to other binary blobs like ME image? Uh, so, yeah, that's work in progress. Yeah. Uh, that's a work in progress. OK. Yeah, I think the it's definitely a work in progress. The unique thing here, I mean, I would say, and I think Amir would agree with me, 
this is a, a solution with the pieces that we have to work with. It is not an ideal solution, but this is what's baked into existing hardware and some of the assumptions in the Intel's designs. Um, and then, yes, we... Could you elaborate on what the hardware you taking back? Well, so, oh, sorry, this is also, um, it intersects with um, Chrome OS's designs and intent, which is we care about not breaking a machine Yes, uh, and, and we were talking earlier how it opens up a potential vector, potentially, of breaking a machine. But fundamentally, we don't want to ever break a machine. And recovery in the, that particular case is um, a first-class citizen in that you can always at least get some input or an out, or excuse me, like maybe output from a device that you can get it back into a clean state. So that's why we have an RO, which actually contains all the pieces to basically re-image everything on your machine. And then if you don't care about that, and there's various, um, many designs actually go down that path, where it's like you're basically in a crippled state. You don't actually know, you just know the thing's broken. Sometimes maybe there's a, a sideband path for updating, sometimes there isn't. Or for that, it could be a USB type thing, an assisted USB through the ME or something like that. That's also a possibility. However, you don't really have a lot of input to the end user that things are in that state. What are you supposed to do? I hit the button. I, it just looks like it's dead. Um, in Chrome OS, for Chromebooks and things like that, our whole goal is to always provide a signal to the user what is going on. In that particular case, that's why we fall back to a full RO path. And we can display instructions and that sort of stuff so that you can get the system back into a, a normal place. So the, the moment you say, I don't care about that. You don't need a lot of redundancy. You don't need, in which what, that's what this is trying to ensure, um, to to allow the RO path as well as you know updating all these other pieces, and and if you care, if you don't care about risking that presumably brick, then you can definitely just throw out a lot of these things. Server, you do care, but not to that extent. Yeah, if you have a sideband way to recover your system, then yes. Right, which is if you have a BMC connected to a control network, that's a pretty easy way to get stuff uh, reprovisioned. Okay, I have a question. Uh, actually, two. Uh, is a top swapper reliable? Because in my past experience, uh, we found top swapper can be like a few, um, mistaken set up by because of the power sequencing. If power sequencing was not good, then top swapper can be like a mistake instead. Then the 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 chipset just put another boot block. So I wonder yeah. if top swap is reliable. Uh, uh, for the newer platform, we find it like we have not uh, run well. into instances where it's not reliable. So every time we have tested this, mm -hmm. we were actually able to switch between the fit table and actually able to switch between the microcode binary in the staging area and the one in sitting in the uh, So pretty reliable. I'm not sure what your experience uh, is. Yes, with it's because we have ball management controller on the ball to control power sequence. And then we found if some kind of condition that make PCH not happy, so PCH will mistakenly set out the bit. So sure, this is for which platform? Uh, Haswell. Okay, sure. Yeah, at that time I believe the fit table is already there. So yeah, I and then the, the second question is: Do do can you roll back to the previous yeah. slides for the flow? And then yeah, this Just one. Just let me know. Uh, yeah, no, next one. Uh, next one. Yeah, I see you have fit table loaded. So for so, yeah, but you have two boot block. Then I wonder if you need to have two fit table in the design. Um, no, actually, we wanted to have a root of trust. So, is your question like we could have packed the no, two I mean, fit table? No, my question is these? fit table contains the information for micro code, the absolute location. Yes. Yeah, so if you put the, you have two mic, uh, two boot block to contain two different version micro code. So, you, but you only have one fit table. So, the, that means if fit table, the microcode size does not match, or like their their new one is larger than the previous one, or short, or smaller than the previous one, then the fit table definitely needs some change. Or you have multiple microcode. So we actually populate the fit table on the runtime, which where it picks uh, the microcode binary and mm -hmm. fills in that data as to where the microcode binary is sitting in, and uh, the size of the microcode binary and the every entry that goes into the fit table, right? So that's done by the code. So, pretty reliable. So, I mean, I think you have a picture of this where you listed the two boot blocks. There's actually two different fit tables. Two different fit yeah. tables. Yeah. Yeah, so, but is it uh, yeah, uh, this is the picture. This is a one. Oh. 
But I think he gets the point, right? Uh, yeah, the, uh, my, yeah, my question. Yeah, this one is my question. Okay. I believe. Okay, thank you. Should both the boot blocks would be part of your RO show? Any other questions? More questions? All right. Um, in case if you have further questions, um, do drop the mail. I uh, will respond to the queries here. So, all right. Thank you. Thanks again. <laughs>